Well, th thanks everybody for uh, for coming out and uh, being here and covering this. Definitely the most damage uh, since I've been governor that I've seen. I've seen a lot of damage. I've been around the state for um, it's my sixth year, but what I saw downtown Sulphur, uh, it's un unbelievable. We've had four confirmed fatalities. One uh, one was here. Um, just right here on the corner. They just removed her body and uh, two in Ada and then uh, one uh, Marietta, is that right? One up down in Marietta. So uh, I spoke with the administrator of FEMA uh, earlier today and uh, she offered her assistance. I told her to thank the president. We're working on uh, the damage assessment. We have Anna with um, the emergency management department. She'll be working on all that. Uh, the federal government will help these people. Um, I've got the speaker and the leader of the, the Senate here, McCourtney. So Charles McCall and Senator McCourtney are here. Just happen to be from this district, the leader in the House and the Senate. And um, we'll do whatever we can to, to help, um, you know, put the pieces back together. So the Oklahoma standard is, is strong. Um, and, um, you know, the speaker was uh, just reminding me, just like that, all this tax revenue, all these businesses in downtown Sulphur just overnight uh, have been have been wiped out. So we need to help help sulfur sulfur rebuild. Um, I started the day and, and uh, did the memorial marathon relay this morning, and then uh, and then just got down here as quick as I could to uh, to see the see the damage. But um, yeah, just uh, just devastating. Governor, what's your south? You said that this is the most you've seen. Yeah, I mean, what just is it about this because I know you flew overhead. You've been on the ground. What sticks out to you? I mean, literally, it's just the uh, it's the amount of damage that was done. So uh, we've got early reports. They think this is an F F four, uh, just kind of blowing right through downtown here, and um, uh, I just haven't seen this much destruction uh, from from uh, from my time as governor. I know we had the '99 tornado, and we've had some F fives. We've had some stuff that hit neighborhoods. Thank goodness it was a downtown that, that there wasn't a lot of people here at 10:30 at night. And um, you know, doesn't doesn't do anything for the one family members that was lost. Um, but it looks—I mean, you just can't believe the destruction. Like it, it seems like every business in downtown has been destroyed now um, here in Sulphur, and uh, haven't haven't made it to Holdenville yet. But I know we had two fatalities over there, and um, so just our, thank our weathermen. They were they were just on this all day long. We were we we knew it was coming. We were prepared, and. Um, you know, Oklahoma does a good job of the warning signals, and so just thank Channel 4, Channel 5, Channel 9, um, all the Tulsa stations for, for reporting on this. I, I had the TV on like most Oklahomans all day yesterday, just kind of watching it and getting updates from, from Annie and the National Weather Service. So, um, Speaker, you got anything you want to add? <clears throat> uh, well, Governor, thank you for being here, first of yep. all. Uh, and I know Senator McCourtney uh, echoes those same sentiments. I've been I've been the representative for Sulphur in Murray County for the last 12 years, and uh, uh, so this is uh, it's, uh, it's really pulls at your heart. And of course, there's lots of Oklahomans hurting right now. This isn't the only area affected, but but the, the level of devastation right here in Sulphur is uh, is un unbelievable to see. And this is something that we deal with, unfortunately. Uh, I do want to echo. I want to thank the tremendous. Uh, weather resources we have in the state and that's why we continue to invest in weather technologies uh, throughout the state at our U university and, uh, research centers. Um, I, of course the loss of life is the most precious thing and that's that is what uh, weighs so heavy on my heart this morning. Everything else can be rebuilt um, but, you, but we can't uh, we can't restore life in the uh, wonderful Oklahomans that we've lost in this in this storm but we will rise we'll clean up we'll rebuild and uh, we'll move forward and we'll be here every step of the way with with sulfur and the other communities <coughs> across the state uh, as we move forward and and uh, seek restoration yeah for me I it's the the first responders the things that they've done we met with uh, EMTs who have been on on duty since 10 o'clock uh, met with EMTs who have been on duty since 10 o'clock this or last night. Uh, 
and they live here. I mean, they, they're not from out of town, so their families are going through this. Their homes may have been damaged, uh, but, but they're here to help and to save lives. So uh, between law enforcement, uh, EMS, all the people that, that have, have done really heroic work, uh, it breaks your heart to, to lose uh, any any life whatsoever. But, but I think that having seen this damage, uh, we're probably blessed uh, that it wasn't worse than than it was and so uh, just it's remarkable yeah it's it, it's incredible uh, never seen anything like this for sure governor have you talked to any communities or families first responders who were affected uh, well we stopped by the uh, the church the red cross has already set up um, kind of a dorm dormitory we had 25 families stay there last night i've talked to one of the families that had to be rescued from their house um, and uh, it was a uh, a family that moved here three years ago and bought a bed and breakfast, and they had uh, their had two kind of adult children, and then uh, or maybe a daughter and a boyfriend or something, or daughter and fiance, and then uh, the mom and dad, and so uh, they were they were there. So the Red Cross, the families, the other church organizations, youth groups were there volunteering. They expect more than the 25 families uh, staying there uh, this evening. So uh, they've already they've already started setting up, and that's what Oklahoma does uh, to to get people. Uh, you know, get them, get them, get them safe. They, they've lost, they've lost everything. Uh, Annie, I'd like, to be, is there an update that you want to give us from uh, emergency management? Sure. And the state emergency operations center began activation on Thursday, actually. So our thoughts and prayers are with all of those that have been impacted through the last couple of days. Um, we did have an active EOC with our American Red Cross, our VOAD partners, the Salvation Army. And so thank you to them. Thank you to our local emergency managers. We were all together until 4:35 in the morning and that effort is still ongoing today our focus is on really understanding search and rescue efforts making sure capabilities are there making sure people have generator power a safe place to go and then starting to look forward on how we help a place like this rebuild and um, we do have fema teams in the state at our state eoc they are here with us we're thankful to our federal delegation as governor stitt mentioned and thank you so much to governor stitt for his support throughout the evening time we could not be here right now with that emergency declaration that we so desperately needed over the nine hours so thank you and for any updates uh, please feel free to reach out to us. I do want to make a note that if anybody has been impacted residential property, please put that information on the website damage.ok.gov and we are tracking damages that way. Thank you. Injuries. What, I, let, let me let her speak to the injuries. I have not heard an injury count yet. I know that uh, at this bar right here where we had the fatality, uh, there was potentially 20 people in the bar and uh, they've all been taken to the hospital. And then the report that I had is they were treated and released. Um, so I don't know specifically on injuries that are still in the hospital and maybe you can give an update on that. Um, I am still looking here. We are we always wait for our inju injury report to come in from the health department. And so I don't actually have that in front of me right now. We will try to include that in our next situation update to all of you. And um, we did have injuries throughout the evening, obviously. We did, again, as I mentioned, work well into the morning hours. And so a lot of this information is still coming in to us at this point in time. Question. Uh, you mentioned search and rescue operations are ongoing. Are there still people missing? Uh, we, we did have a team here that was looking in this site. I don't have those numbers right now. I would defer to some of the local emergency managers and to Commissioner Tipton yeah, on that you, information. There, the, here in the, uh, about 30, 30 people were injured here in Sulphur. So we don't have the total number yet from Holdenville, from Marietta, from other parts of the state, but 30 here. Uh, but how many are still in the hospital? Uh, we don't have those those numbers yet. Is anyone missing right now? Nothing. Not that we're aware of. We don't want to misreport that information, and so we will try to capture that information and push it out to you as we have it. What are most of the crews doing right now? Most of the crews, as search and rescue efforts are ending after they've looked house to house, most of them are going to start beginning to look at damages. We do still have a lot of... Um, 
nursing homes, hospitals that did, medical facilities that took hits last night. And so we're looking to make sure that they do have proper generator power and that these operations can still stand up. Uh, making sure that the shelter operations maintain. Again, we have uh, currently in our EOC, we do have an active EOC with our Oklahoma Baptist men are manning the, the BOAD effort there. And so just making sure that people have what they need is the most important thing right now. And the other efforts as we begin to come in and help the city managers, the elected officials navigate what's next for them here. What will that help look like specifically? Uh, it depends. So we're going to be looking at things that might be uninsured losses. We're going to be looking at bringing in uh, the federal resources as we have them. Uh, Administrator Criswell, who reached out to Governor Stitt, has always provided the utmost support to this state. And so we've been here before um, for these businesses, looking at things like the Small Business Administration potentially, and then other philanthropic philanthropic opportunities as other opportunities do come forward to help people recover and get back to a place that they have safe, adequate shelter and are, are cared for in that way. Anything to add to that, Governor? No, no, just uh, we appreciate that. And literally, thank you for, for the coverage you did because you, you really helped people understand how to take cover. And Oklahoma does that very well. We've been through this before. And, uh, and like the speaker said, we're going to we're going to help uh, Sulphur rebuild. And they've lost a lot here and all the, the businesses. And uh, um, it's just uh, it's un, it's un unbelievable. But thank, thank goodness we, it wasn't it wasn't worse on the on the uh, on the injury side. So, thank you. all. We, we thank you. Yeah. And we can still get an appropriation in. We're still in session. The speaker just told me that if we need to do something immediate for uh, these businesses and the, and the um, you know the police, fire, all all of, all of those, all of these uh, resources come from state uh, or from uh, their city sales tax revenue. So, thank you guys so much.